Hey dude, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I've got a review of licensing your music on Audio Sparks and whether or not it is worth your time to upload your music on to stock, uh, your music onto Audio Sparks. If you're really interested in pursuing music licensing, I've got a free five-day crash course that you can sign up for down at the link below, and it'll teach you everything you need to know to start licensing your music by the end of the five days. Nothing's hidden. It's basics of music licensing, and you go check it out, and I promise that you'll be able to get songs up and out there and earning money for you within five days. So, before we go any farther, though, on this review of Audio Sparks, I would appreciate it if you watch the intro. Okay, let's take a look at Audio Sparks. So, what we're going to cover in this Audio Sparks review is what makes Audio Sparks unique amongst some of the other stock music licensing platforms. We're going to talk about whether or not you can earn decent money from Audio Sparks. We're going to talk about the submission criteria for Audio Sparks. We're going to talk about just the general ease of use as a musician, uploading and downloading and tagging and all of that stuff that you have to do as a music licensor. And we're gonna talk about the pros and cons just broadly about Audio Sparks. One thing though to note before we go farther is that you should totally subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning how to license your music because I come out with videos all the time that offer you insightful, actionable advice to start licensing your music and make money from all this stuff that you've got building up on your hard drive. You have any questions about music licensing? Just leave, a question, just leave a comment below. I respond to every comment I get, and I'd be happy to steer you in the right direction. So let's look at this right here. Uh, you notice this is Audio Sparks homepage. It looks dated. Um, <laughs> it looks very dated. They need you know a new graphic designer. But on the back end, Audio Sparks is actually pretty smooth. They just upgraded a lot of their hardware. We'll get into it, but one of the things that does make Audio Sparks unique is its look, which definitely is more early 2000s than 2021. So, what makes Audio Sparks unique? There are several things that differentiate Audio Sparks from other music licensing platforms. The first is that Audio Sparks will control your publishing. What does that mean? Well, at a very high level, basically, as a songwriter, you are entitled to royalties every time your song is broadcast, for example, on TV. Now, the fee that you get is split between you and your publisher. If you don't have a publisher, then you get to keep 100% of the money. If you do have a publisher, then it's split 50-50. The problem is, or the reason that publishers are helpful is that they often do a lot of the legwork of getting your songs registered with your performing rights organization like BMI. They also do a lot of work tracking down the people that are broadcasting your songs so that you actually get paid and that they file the information that you need to get paid. So does, you know, is it worth it? Potentially, yeah. Most professional uh, songwriters have a publisher and those publishers earn their keep. So by default, it's not a bad thing. Just know that every song that you upload Audio Sparks will retitle and register with your PRO and they will take the publisher's share. Second, with Audio Sparks, you have the option of signing up for digital distribution. What does that mean? Well, they work with various vendors or third party contractors and they will take your songs. These are people that like create playlists, right? These are people that are really good at creating playlists and they will add your songs to a playlist, and then every time your song gets paid, you get a cut. So this is how I've racked up literally like 200,000 plays on Spotify with my music, which is really cool, right? I mean, I don't have any means of getting my music played a couple hundred thousand times. As a musician, that's really exciting to me, and as a human being that like, wow, hundreds of thousands of people have heard my music. The downside of it, though, is that there's not a ton of money to be made from it because first there is the person actually creating the playlist or the vendor and they take a cut and then audio sparks takes their cut and then you get what's left over. So, you know, for like 
a couple hundred thousand plays, I got, I don't even remember at this point, but let's say 80 bucks, which is not great. But at the same time, if I were to put all my music on Spotify, and I have, I have earned nowhere near $80. So that's $80 that I never had, and my music got heard by a lot of people. All in all, an interesting thing to consider. Second, there is the opportunity, third, uh, third, there's the opportunity to get your song played on in-store radio. You know, anytime you go into a mall, into a store, into outside, basically, you are always hearing music piped in. And that music has to come from somewhere. Audio Sparks has relationships with a lot of different companies to broadcast music in their stores. And they can, if you opt in, you can have your music included with that which is a way that I, I probably earn about 15 to $20 a month through that, which is money I'd never have, and that um, my songs are getting heard thousands of times. Again, it's a system where, you know, you're getting a pretty small revenue stream per play, but your songs are genuinely getting heard by thousands or tens of thousands of people every month, and you're getting paid out for it. I'll also note that that, Chunk has definitely seen a big hit from Corona virus just because people aren't going into shops as much. So, you know, with all the restaurants and shops closing, they may not. Um, well, I would expect it to grow in the future based on everything that's happened. This year has been a down year. Uh, next, you've got, at least from my perspective, next you have internet royalties. So they can also monetize your music so that if somebody puts it on YouTube, for example, you will get paid a royalty unless that person actually has the right and claims that right to upload it, which can be helpful. I haven't earned any money from that, um, and I think there might be some errors with their system, but maybe not. Maybe it works and I just, all my songs that I've uploaded haven't, or that I've made haven't been uploaded to YouTube. I don't know. They also have blanket licensing details, which ba um, deals, which basically allow, I believe it's, uh, allow a big television network to use your songs for free without having to pay anything up front. But if that music was broadcast on TV, you would be entitled to your songwriter's share of the publishing, uh, which could be very lucrative. I have yet to get a song included through blanket licensing, but um, I have had songs broadcast on TV and several of them have made me, or one of them has made me several thousand dollars. Um, one other thing that makes Audio Sparks really unique is that their songs, if you put them up on Audio Sparks, they're up there in perpetuity, meaning you can never take them down, which is a big sticking point, and which is why you should not rush out and join Audio Sparks today unless you really have some sense of what you're doing. I've made a video and a blog post, which I'll link to, uh, explaining how to develop a stock music licensing strategy, and you really need to read that before you decide whether or not you want to join audio sparks because it has to be part of your overall strategy how much can you earn on audio sparks well they share 40 percent of their revenue with you um, which is i guess these days industry standard even though it kind of sucks um, but what is nice about it is that audio sparks provides all these unique and diversified revenue streams above and beyond just getting your music purchased and then maybe broadcast, right? You've got in-store, you've got digital distribution, you've got um, these blanket licensings, you've got internet royalties. And so I think it's always good to have lots of options for how to earn. There are very few really stock music sites out there that even generate revenue. So to have consistent revenue coming in from Audio Sparks isn't a terrible thing. I will say that I have not sold that many licenses of music just up front. I've only sold two in three years, but still I am making a consistent income of a couple hundred dollars a year through Audio Sparks because um, of all these other revenue streams that I've talked about, digital distribution, in-store, etc. And over the three years, I've earned about $550. Um, there is a big lag in reporting, though, for some of these things like it's like, it takes 
a couple quarters with a vendor to get their information, and then they report it to AudioSparks, and then maybe like two quarters later, AudioSparks lets you know. So this is sort of a thing that you just have to constantly be working at and just trust that there's a process and things are going on behind the scenes and that one day you'll log on and be like, whoa, my song was played, my songs were played 200,000 times. Cha-ching. What about the submission criteria at AudioSparks? Who can join? Well, you have to own all the rights to your songs and they have a very stringent upfront policy, but once you're in and you're established, that's pretty much quality controls and that's it. They don't have a specific sound they're looking for. One thing I would recommend is that you come in, you don't start applying to Audio Sparks until you've got a batch of songs, at least 20 different tracks, because then you become a featured artist, which just makes it so that your, your music is a little more visible in playlists and in search and things like that. Like I said, all genres of music are valid for Audio Sparks, so as long as your music is good, doesn't matter if it's you know, polka death metal or lounge music, there's a world for it. At the same time, though, something that you really need to keep in mind is that Audio Sparks has a um, policy that they don't want you to upload the same tracks on Audio Sparks as you would in what they, I guess you could charitably call our cheap libraries. And they have a list of them and they include Audio Jungle in that list and they also include certain subscription services. So you have to kind of decide, do you want to go all in on subscription services and audio jungle, or do you want to put your music on audio sparks instead? I definitely double up there. Ease of use. Is it easy to use? Ultimately, yes, it is. I think that at the end of the day, I enjoy uploading music to audio sparks most. It's the very robust platform. Plus, it's one of the easiest ones to come up with all the keywords that you need. And then what I like to do is, once I've got all of those generated through Audio Sparks, I then will use them to sort of seed my keywords on other sites. So it's usually the first site I upload to. There is a very steep learning curve to their system, though. And um, it's kind of a weird interface. But once you get it down, it is the most robust and fastest system once you learn how to do it. Not only is it fast in terms of you, the amount of batch editing and the flexibility you have, but it's also fast in that like their servers very quickly upload and process your songs. Their servers automatically add a watermark or an audio mark. I'm looking at you, Audio Jungle. And their servers also automatically trim silence at the end of your song. I'm looking at you, Pond5, so that if you forgot to do that, which you shouldn't, but it happens, um, your song is still ends at a normal point. They, um, they have a lot of support resources, but it's like super confusing and they need to go back and rewrite it. If you ask me, it's like just a bunch of like random FAQs they put together over 15 or 20 years, but nothing's like, so you have to read like three FAQs to get the full answer as opposed to like, let's build a modern consolidated FAQ. Like I said, and as you saw, the website does appear dated. That said, I know that they just upgraded the technology under it to uh, get rid of Java, uh, JavaScript support. And so I think they're definitely investing in the website. They just, I don't know, they must like that look. I'm hoping there's going to be a revamp soon. Finally, I'd add that every time I've talked to tech support, which hasn't been too often, they've been very responsive. So pros and cons. Like I said, if you're going to join AudioSparks, it needs to be part of a deliberate strategy. So please watch the video and read the article I have on building a stock music licensing strategy because it's the only way that you're going to be able to make AudioSparks work for you. It can easily boost your income by a couple hundred dollars a year, which is great for very little extra work. Um, and I think there's a big upside here. like. I think over time, as you just get more music out on more playlists, you know, your music is just working for you. Other people are hustling to promote your music. And so even though the sliver of the pie is small, the long tail of it is big. It's diversified because you're not just depending on one type of stock music license. Um, that said, if you're really super keen on just the idea of licensing your music for film and TV, this might not be where you should focus 
your efforts because they're um, despite being billed as the music that powers Hollywood I have not as far as I know I've, I've made two licenses and I don't think either of those ended up being broadcast and another big con is that your music is up there in perpetuity but when it all comes down to it yes figure out what your strategy is and if there is a place in your strategy for creating lots of b-grade songs that you know are never going to be ready and ripe for pitching to exclusive libraries i absolutely recommend that you put them up on audio sparks in conjunction with pond 5. don't forget to download that free crash course it's going to teach you everything you need to know about music licensing or if you really want to dig deeper into music licensing, I have an advanced course that you can sign up for. Just go visit the website down below. I thank you for watching this. Leave any questions or comments you have. and Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.